Saurabh Mukherjee is joining us uh, today, founder and chief investment officer at Marcellus Investment Managers. Uh, Saurabh, we always love you. I love eat when you come by. We, <laughs> so great no, to have you. also fine. His, his, his wit and wisdom yeah, is there to speaker, be loved for everybody. As a speaker. <laughs> All right. Let's start by talking about what our big topic is this morning. Poll dates are announced. Is it going to be a big deal? Is it all priced in? No, I think I think it's not all priced in. It can't possibly. When a billion people go to the elections, yeah. when one billion people go to the elections, you can't possibly believe that it's all priced into the stock market. I think there's two different dimensions to what we need to think through here. I think we have a small cap. We have a small cap. Uh, a, a rally in India, which does not is not underpinned by fundamentals. I think we'll have to see how how that uh, that small cap rally holds up through these uh, six weeks, right? Six weeks of polling from 19th April through to 4th June. Uh, and then in the second situation is uh, we have a global economic recovery underway. Uh, it looks like across the world rate cycles have peaked. It looks like over the next uh, uh, six months interest rates will start coming down. Inflation seems to have peaked all over the world. Indian large caps, Indian large caps relative to Indian small caps are the cheapest they've been for nearly 20 years. And therefore, that's also a very interesting situation. Remember, if there is an electoral outcome which positively surprises the market, it'll come through in, uh, uh, disproportionately to large caps, given that big Indian counters are at their cheapest in 10 years, 20 years. So two different dimensions to the polls, I think. Uh, a worrying situation in small caps, which I don't think is, is, is has fully played out. I think there's more to go for the small cap correction uh, and it'll be interesting to see how small caps hold up through those six weeks of elections and correspondingly the converse, absolutely opposite situation large caps where they're looking very tasty, very attractive and as global investors uh, uh, come back to India, uh, 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 they will pro most probably go towards these large cap stocks. Saurabh, uh, of course with uh, what you just said that there's so much more to go with this rally keeping in mind that a billion people go into voting uh, we get that what does this mean for foreign inflows uh, they've been uh, spotty in the last couple of months uh, but of course with so much expected and so much riding on the one of the world's largest uh, democracies do you expect them to start coming in uh, very swiftly or is it going to be slow and staggered Right. So I think as long as the U.S. 10-year bond, I think the U.S. 10-year bond is the critical metric. If you get the U.S. 10-year bond yield going up, foreigners tend to get scared. So that's what happened, for example, in January. The U.S. 10-year bond yield went up 20, 30 bips because of that whole Houthi situation in the Middle East. Oil prices went up a little bit. If, if oil prices stay at, at around $70, $80, uh, if inflationary pressure stays subdued in the Western world and in India, uh, I'm pretty sure we will see punchy foreign inflows, right? I don't, I mean, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball into what the election results will be. If the uh, assembly election results from November, December were any guide to the general election results, my reading is we will see hefty foreign investor inflows over the rest of the rest of this calendar year or in FI25. Uh, the only caveat I'd uh, like to put in there is the inflationary outlook. If inflation starts picking up, right, the moment you get stickiness in inflation, the moment the U.S. 10-year bond deal starts picking up, foreigners get jittery about coming into India. Provided that inflation situation behaves itself, I'm pretty sure we will get hefty foreign investor inflows uh, in FI25. Saurabh, good morning. Neeraj here. Uh, just wondering if, if this uh, election period, pre-election period is slightly different than the past in one that we've had a reasonably strong pre-election rally in the preceding one year. Not a pre-election rally, but a rally in the preceding one year already. So can we kind of anticipate it, you know, you know, apple to apple, it's not happened in the past. And part two, quite unlike 2019 or 2014 or maybe even 2009, uh, the the market belief of policy continuity is much higher this time. So in sums then, is a part of that, if not for the small caps, but for the larger caps priced in? I know you started off saying it's not priced in because a billion people go to vote, but I'm still asking you. Sure. So let's look at what's priced in and what's not, right? Just to keep it very simple, uh, over the last couple of years, large caps in India, Sensex, Nifty, 
would have compounded at around 20 odd percent, right? Broadly in line with earnings, uh, the Nifty PE multiple is not radically higher than what it was, say, 48 months ago. Uh, sorry, the, the Nifty PE multiple is not radically higher than what it was 24 months ago, right? There's no reason to believe that in large caps, there's a bubble. There is no reason to believe there's excessive valuations in the Nifty or the Sensex. In that regard, whatever be the election outcome, I don't think large caps have, have spent too much time factoring it in. So the reverse, absolutely the reverse holds true in small caps, right? So, uh, small caps in India, the small cap broader indices are up 140, 150% over three years. Over the last 12 months alone, they're up around 55%. Obviously, unless, you know, unless somebody out there is drinking something funny, there hasn't been 30, 40, 50% EPS growth in small caps over the last one year or over the last three years, right? And therefore, you have a small cap bubble. Uh, big chunks of the small cap e ecosystem have have factored in all sorts of optimism, all sorts of upbeat news, which I don't think is based on any realistic assumptions. I think a big part of this is retail money. DMAT accounts in India have tripled in the last three years. A lot of these retail investors have gone and loaded up on small caps. All the data shows that. And I think that's where, that's where we have a challenge. The small cap investor has more than factored in some very optimistic election outcomes. And I'm afraid uh, some of them might not be based on any realistic analysis of uh, Indian companies or the Indian economy. Sort of in which case, uh, assuming that uh, the uh, assuming, let's assume that it's, it's difficult to predict what will happen in three months uh, for somebody who invests the way you do. And therefore you invest, let's say for one year at the very least, you're looking at the year at large. Uh, if the election verdict is for poly government continuity and policy continuity, uh, do you think the reactions therefore uh, would be more dependent not on what the election verdict throws up, but as you said, on global factors and presumably on earnings growth within India as well, and that election this year may not be as big a determinant of what the market does for the rest of the calendar, as opposed to some of the other things, assuming that there is policy continuity, of course. Yeah, I think I think it's a good, so you put it in a nice way, Neeraj. So if 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 the if the incumbent government comes back with a strong majority, I think we will see hefty foreign inflows into India. Unquestionably, the vast majority of those foreign inflows will be into large caps. Uh, large caps, therefore, should re-rate after the elections more decisively than small caps. If, on the other hand, there is wobbliness in the election results, perhaps the, in the ruling government's uh, majority, if it, it if it doesn't end up being as large as currently expected, we will see a broader market pullback. In that broader market pullbacks, I think small caps will suffer disproportionately. Whichever way you look, whichever way you look at it. Uh, we as investors should be loading up on high quality Indian large caps today and be wary of small cap valuations at this juncture. Uh, Saurabh, just to take that forward, when you say that if the majority is not what is being expected, are you talking about char so ke par? Because the government doesn't need uh, that kind of a mandate to form the next, uh, uh, you know, government. No party needs that kind of mandate, but that is what has been set. Um, That's right. Are you saying anything lesser than that will be seen as a negative, even if there's policy continuity? That's right. So, so without getting into numbers of whether it's char so or teen so nabbay or char so das, and without without getting numbers there, uh, if if the government comes through with a with a majority, the incumbent government comes through with a majority, but not an overwhelming one. I think there's a potential for market pullback. In that market pullback, I think small caps suffer more than than large caps. Saurabh, uh, you talked about how the focus will move to large cap and we've talked about this even before elections, right? For a long time we've talked about if FIs need to come back, it had to be in the large cap space. Then of course we saw the sell-off across broader markets again, anticipating that could be a trigger for funds now to increase allocation in large caps. So there's more than one reason why large caps should be doing well. But from an election angle, uh, one of the themes that a lot of investors, traders, tactical players have been looking at is government-focused sectors. Those are largely focused in the broader market. So mid-cap, small-cap stocks that have been touted to be the next blue chip uh, in the railways, defense, uh, you know, I'm going to even go down to saying uh, anything that's infrastructure driven. Uh, how would you then play that theme? Would you say that because they are small and mid-cap and expensive and under the radar of the regulator for various reasons, these are stocks that even if are government focused should be avoided by investors? So I think that's where part of the delusion I think has kicked in. So for example, 
the FM couldn't be clearer in her first February uh, vote on account, right? She couldn't be clearer. She she reduced the growth uh, the growth rate of government spending on on infrastructure capex, right? So the twenty one budget. The 22 budget and the 23 budget government spending on infrastructure roughly grew by 30 35 percent and for good reason having the government having had a blistering run -in, in pushing up infra railways defense capex for three consecutive years in the vote on account on first feb this year the fm restrained that number to i think 11 12 percent right and yet uh, uh the bulls who believe that uh uh uh, uh suppliers to the government capex effort will become nifty stocks uh, are still on a trip entirely of their own and that's exactly the kind of uh, of uh, uh, delusional thinking that i think will get called out as we go past the elections and into the and into the uh, the union budget uh, post elections yeah i mean you can't be clearer than that uh, large caps large caps large caps is the focus that saurabh mukherjee is speaking about saurabh thank you so much uh, for joining us um, on the show